Back on the hunt for evidence of Viking attacks, something extraordinary has come up on the mainland. I'd almost given up hope of finding archaeological evidence in Britain for a Viking raid on a monastery, but new finds in the north of Scotland could be just what I'm looking for. On this site at Tarbert, about 30 miles north of Inverness, archaeologists have discovered traces of a monastery that dates from the 8th century. Now, it carries on in use throughout the time that Viking raids are starting up, and it certainly lies in a very vulnerable position because it's right next to the coast. But up till now, this monastery, along with all the others we know from this period, have shown no archaeological evidence of a Viking raid. Professor Martin Carver, who's been working on the site for six years, began to uncover clues that this monastery might have suffered a violent attack. The first sign was large fragments of broken Christian sculpture. When we found the pieces of sculpture, we noticed two things about them straight away. Um, first, um, they are astonishingly beautiful and very, very fresh. Every body working on the site was, you can imagine, hugely excited at digging up works of art is something that doesn't happen very often in one's archaeological career, or ever, in fact. The, the carving just seems like it was made yesterday. We also noticed that, in many cases, they'd been sort of really just smashed and cracked. Look at that. And in many cases, we could fit them together again, you see. Clearly, some one or more great monuments had been broken up and broken up forcibly and quickly and violently with a sledgehammer. Right, we are going down to visit the revetment wall now. I'll just lead the way, but be careful. At the site, Martin shows me the spot where he'd uncovered the sculpture. It's this, um, this layer here. You see the black one that right. goes across? That's the one that produced all the sculpture, the broken pieces of sculpture. Well, there's some big bits of charcoal in that. There are. This is burnt wood, and there's nails as well in the same layer. So what do you think is actually going on here? Well, somebody has burnt down buildings, but I think not here. This isn't burning in situ. They burnt down a building probably near the top of the hill where the church now stands, broken up sculpture and tipped it down here. So the heart's been torn out of this monastery. Given that there's lots of documentary evidence for Viking attacks on monasteries, but no archaeological evidence up to now, I mean, do you think you've got the first evidence of one of these attacks? I think we may have. I mean, this burning layer may well be a clue. And if we can confirm this as the violent end of a monastery and we can date it to the 9th century and ascribe it to the Vikings, and, and why not, I think that will be down to opening a really big area. But that's not all. There's other evidence at this site that points to a Viking raid. The bodies of murdered monks. Most of the monks' burials probably lie underneath the present churchyard, but some of them were discovered when the present church was investigated and its floors were dug up. They're really what you'd expect of a group of monks. They're mostly middle-aged males, but several of them showed signs of sword wounds. <laughs> they may have been a group of peaceful monks, but some of them seem to have had a very violent death. <laughs> Could this have happened during the period of Viking attacks? Martin has sent bones from three of the skeletons for carbon dating. Two of the skeletons are from what looks like part of the monastic burial ground. A third is from a different part of the cemetery, and carbon dating reveals that he died after 1100, once the monastery had been destroyed. But the two skeletons thought to be monks tell a different story. They died sometime between the years 700 and 1000, a large range, but it fits perfectly with the period of Viking attacks. If you look at the injuries, you'll see that the kind of injuries they sustained are the kind of injuries that come from sword cuts. Yes, so what sort of injury did this person sustain, Martin? Is it, is it these? Uh, yes, two grooves here made by a heavy blade, but then healed up. Now, this one here was less lucky. Um, I mean, that is a you know, very, very... That's very, a massive... Very, that's a massive it? cut and a very heavy blade that's cut that through. Well, and there's another little... Can you see that little there? one there? So that's two slicing blows... Yeah, to the back, to the of, back the of the head. And then that one 
coup de grace, so to speak. That's a cut across here. Then this fracture has, has spread as a result of that, that massive blow. Do you really think that these are the victims of Vikings? Well, I think they could be. These two people have both suffered blade injuries. This one certainly died from the attack. Um, and at the same time, our monastic establishment um, seems to be coming to an end. I mean, as, as a result of this evidence, I at least find it easier to believe in, in, in tales of Viking attacks on monasteries than I did before. These new discoveries are surely the best archaeological evidence from the British Isles for Viking raids. But they're exciting for another reason. No raid at Tarbot was ever documented. Indeed, not even the existence of the monastery was known until the recent excavations. So how many other raids went unreported 